adjunct professor of finance at Boğaziçi University. He joins us now from Istanbul. Good to have you back with us, Taha. We know the boycott movement against Israel is nothing new, and we see it flare up every time Israel attacks Gaza or uh, the other Palestinian territories. I explain to us, how effective in your view are boycott movements more generally? Boycotts are, are generally uh, very effective. I mean, the most effective being uh, the Montgomery bus boycott uh, in, in the mid-50s in, in the United States that launched really Martin Luther King Jr. and his efforts uh, to, uh, to find equality for African Americans in the United States. Later, obviously, there was uh, the apartheid boycotts in the United States and other countries. Ironically, Israel did not participate in this boycott, helping South Africa actually arm themselves uh, during apartheid, uh, during, uh, which led ultimately to the freeing of Nelson Mandela and uh, strains and steps to, to uh, find equality in South Africa. So in general, boycotts work. Um, uh, obviously, they have to be sustained. They have to be uh, widespread for them to affect policy. Um, but we'll see if they work here. Yes, and the long-standing boycott movement of Israel is known as BDS, which stands for Boycotts, uh, Divestments and Sanctions. So uh, that, I guess, encapsulates uh, three measures uh, under which governments, as well as ordinary people, can take in order to really protest Israel's uh, ongoing oppression of the Palestinian people. But we have seen pushback from many governments, particularly Western governments, against the BDS movement. Do you see that changing, uh, particularly in the wake of this current conflict, where we're seeing the death toll in Gaza uh, reach unprecedented highs? I, I don't see it changing, frankly. I think, if anything, it's going to get stronger. Um, we're almost 11,000, maybe we're over that, uh, 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 deaths now, uh, most of them, the vast majority, if not all, uh, from what I've uh, read, are, are civilians, half of, more than half of them are children, apparently. So um, even if, if, you, uh, if you take at face value the, the, the aims at, uh, uh, of, of Israel here, the collateral damage at some point, as they would uh, refer to it, um, has a limit at some point. You can't just kill two million people um, because of, uh, of the actions of, of, of a very few. Um, so that's where we're going now. I don't think it's going to. I don't think that's going to happen. I think um, the calls of uh, we, we saw the former minister call for a nuclear attack on Gaza, something ridiculous like that, a couple of days ago. Um, so I don't think that's going to continue for much longer. I think the people, the world, has really had enough. I think most Israelis, frankly, have had enough. Um, but uh, some Israelis have turned this into a political, um, a political ploy to gain votes um, and, and, uh, and are trying to uh, really extend this, unfortunately, as long as they can. When Russia began its attack on Ukraine, we did see quite an unprecedented uh, wave of actions from Western countries in terms of imposing sanctions on the Russian economy. Uh, we saw many Western companies pull out of Russia in response uh, to its waging of war against Ukraine. But this time round, in the wake of uh, masses of civilian deaths in Gaza, seemingly indiscriminate, the sh killing of women and children in the enclave, uh, the very same companies have largely been silent. How would you explain that? How would you explain this double standard that seems to be playing out with the conflict in Gaza? I mean, the reality is, in democracies, uh, elected officials are elected um, periodically, every two years for the U.S. Congress, six years for the Senate. Uh, the president changes every four years. And they need funds, frankly, uh, to, to finance their campaigns. So if you have a very strong lobbying movement uh, in a democracy in the United States or elsewhere, uh, then you can really uh, do whatever you want. Apparently, the Russians did not have as strong uh, a lobbyist uh, group uh, as apparently Israel does. Um, but you know, if, if you read on, on social media, some U.S. congressmen come out staunchly in favor of this continued uh, killings of all these uh, innocent civilians. All you need to do is really search online to see have they been uh, paid uh, handsomely for their uh, words by uh, lobbyists uh, on behalf of Israel, and, and unfortunately. Um, many times that's the case. So um, will uh, the double standard really comes down to, like all things, unfortunately, uh, money here. And so um, 
I think that's the double standard. Okay, Taha Arbas, we'll leave it there. But good to get your analysis as always. Thank you. My pleasure.